Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Formable Nations video. It seems that we may have forgotten about some Formable Nations <laughs> going as far back as Waking the Tiger, and one of them may just have been the Ratanakosin Kingdom, probably said terribly. So today we right that wrong, which was wrong to have not righted all that time ago, by going for the right starting date of 1939. I don't know if I've ever started with Blitzkrieg, but let's just have a quick gander. So, as the only nation that I know to do this as, we can begin as Siam, which is interesting because in the 1939 start date, they begin as Fash. If you start in 1936, they're non-aligned, which is something to bear in mind. Surely this will take a long time, <laughs> and not just be instant. So, here we see our formable nation, Strenfen the Ratanakosin heritage. To do this, we simply need to take two places, Cambodia and Laos. Here's Laos. And here's Cambodia. Lucky for us, in 1939, we have five army experience, which is enough to get some horses. I do like horses. Then we can get rid of this army, because we need the guns, and start spamming out some cavalry divisions. Once all that is done, we just need to wait for World War II. Oh, look, it's World War II. <laughs> so, what's the key difference here? Well, there are a couple of ways you can go about this. Um, one of them is to join Germany and help them with their conquest of France. That could give us a quick in and out to go for France. So let's see what we can do. I think that should be a sufficiently big enough army. Okay, with the Netherlands now joining the Allies, I think just about the time they start pushing through Belgium, we're going to join the Axis. The only things I'll say is to remember that you also have a border with British Malaya and India, so it's not going to be quite a simple push through. Okay, with Belgium on the front line, let's see if we can't get ourselves involved. Okay, we're in the Axis, now we join the war, and off we go. Put all our plans on green, and that should be a good amount of units pushing on all these fronts. So basically, because we had joined the war through the Axis, the French had no idea we were coming, and it's a steamroll. And while you look at that, we've only just started and we can strengthen the Ratanakosin Kingdom. Boop. Oh god, it's such an awful colour. But with that, the rebirth of the kingdom, so or empire in this case. So it really is that simple if you just want to speed run it. Um, there's basically no skill required. So what can you do if you go a different route in 1936? Let's find out. So after some wibbly wobbly timey-wimey stuff, we're back as Siam, previously the Siamese Empire, and this time we're going to see what we can truly achieve from 1936. Of course, this time we are not starting off as a Fash, we're starting off as a kingdom, so we're going to have to go political effort to change that immediately. In addition, we're going to make sure that we build a little naval base just here from the start of the game, so we have access to the Bay of Bengal. I'm pretty sure this is the only province that will have this ability. After that, it's pretty standard Hoi 4 gameplay, civil war and all the usual. Siam is really such an underrated nation because with all that rubber, you become a massive trading partner for the Axis, just unintentionally getting civs. It really does make me wonder if there's a world out there where they could go back to formable nations like this one. And you know how like uh, New Zealand has the ability to ask people if they can give territory? It could be cool to see a decision here that says France is willing to give you Laos and Cambodia if you give them access to, let's say, the 56 rubber that you have down here, or maybe the resources here. So that way, you know, you you still get your kingdom, and France gets the ability to stop the access or anybody else from having access to the rubber. It's basically a win-win for both. I think we all collectively have to agree, I'm never going to be able to say any of these people's names. So let's just take our demagogue, make sure we start our industrial stuff, and to never speak of this again. Okay, with 5 army XP, I'm pretty sure I can afford a horse. Can you believe it, guys? A horse. 5 XP away. I am so happy about this information. We're going to make sure to expand civil support so that we can get our stability low, but we're not going to ignite the civil war until we are precisely ready. Okay, with submarines done, we should be able to get transport ships going for all those wonderful naval invasions, and we're doing naval effort. Once this is like a day away from completion, we start the Civil War. That way we get six dockyards instead of three. Three, two, one. Okay, with two days remaining, I think that's good enough for me. I'm not too risky. Uh, let's make sure we delete all our units, ignite the Civil War, and spawn a horse friend to win it for us. With the political power we get from this, 
I'm gonna begin justifying on Oman, our most cursed enemy. Do, do, do. Hopefully no horses spawn to fight me. Everything, yep, okay, all good. And with that, <laughs> another three dockyards. So that is quite uh, quite the naval buildup we've allowed ourselves. To be brutally honest, the thing that's really strangling any progress with um, Thailand at the start of the game is just the lack of research slots. I feel like you have the manpower, you have the industry, but you just don't have the means to make the things you want to do. So it uh, can get pretty rough. Ooh, war economy. And that is the good stuff. So with both our naval invasions now fully set out, you might have been questioning how to reach such a long distance. Um, with the submarines in this new port, we obviously don't have the range. But lucky for us, Italy is such a kind person that they've decided to let us come along for the ride. Now, thanks to them, we have the naval superiority. Ah, justification complete. Let's get to work. So the purples go first, and then we give it a bit, and then the greens go. Okay, we've got some good landings. God, I wouldn't want to be here right now. It's like the worst D-Day in the world. All right, there we go. So now we should have them locked in this combat. There they are, trapped. Meanwhile, around the back, we're coming in. Victory. All right, with that done, I think we can move straight on to Saudi Arabia. Oh, <laughs> we need more political power. So for our next naval invasion, so for our next naval invasion extravaganza, we've got another dual sort of pronged attack. One coming in for this port on the east, and one coming on for this port in the west. I'm pretty sure we all have naval supremacy, so it's just about making sure we have good units to hold them right here. I am building a port here though, just to make sure they do have some supply. I don't want it to be, I mean look at these guys, they have supply, it's just not good. Okay good, with our port completed, our units are up to tough with their units. Okay, despite my limited research slots, we now have our core air force online. Uh, obviously not the best, but I simply don't have time to make anything better. We're attacking by sea, we're attacking by land. The only one we're missing now is attacking by air, and I think we've got all three. Let's make sure we stop training, uh, preferably not completely strangling ourselves in the desert. And let's make a billion arrows appear. Honestly, I expected more range, <laughs> but that will do. If that's all we can muster, that's all we can muster. Oh, and we can get Queen of Battle, which means we can actually hire some generals. There we go, that's what I wanted, lots of infantry officers. It was worth the wait. All right, let's see if we can get this done. Going all out, land, sea, and air. All right, we're getting pushed in the south, but we're doing some good counter offensives. Uh, let's make sure we actually do have air superiority. That <laughs> probably helps. The air attacks are underway. Okay, we can't get that port, but we can land there. On the flip side, we actually had a very successful invasion on, on the west coast, which is what I like to see. May not yet all be lost. Okay, pushing through, pushing through. <laughs> the first power drop has just happened. It took his time. Well, the northern invasion didn't go well because they sadly had somebody on the port. These horses are not designed for actual combat. They're just designed to really screw up front lines. This is a mess, but I think it's a winning mess. All right, I think we're pushing them out of the capital. It's taking some time, and I'm definitely not planning a George Bush in the meantime. Well, sweeping that one under the rug. Let's just uh, see what we can do quickly. So while the losses look pretty bad, in truth, you have to remember that those cavalry units were literally just two widths. I didn't care about them at all. We also lost uh, five of our paratroopers, but the core army is all still here, looking good. So as we can see, fighting again in a desert is still not gonna be easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reorganize the railway system and get to work building a hub right here so that we should be able to have some supply on this front line. Not much, but some. <laughs> of all the issues with the generic focus tree, access to 1940 subs is uh, not something to be scoffed at. Are you telling me I've invaded the Middle East and I'm having problems with fuel? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Arabia, not the Middle East. I see, That's that was my mistake. It all makes sense now. All right, now that looks to me like supply. Unfortunately, those are actual units, like re real units for an actual war. Hmm, 
I think I'm coming to the decision where I'm starting to doubt my need for so many dockyards. Uh, we might start deleting them and using the free spaces we got to build up some uh, more mills. See, going with the dockyard strat isn't just about getting the dockyards, but also about the free building slots they give you. The free, free building slots. Oh god, it's done. Okay, one sec, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Do do. All right. Good luck, everyone. I, I, I swear to God, I better not be here for the next few years. That is not something I'm interested in being in. Oh God, I see red. Oh God, it's happening again. <laughs> well, the power drops at least went down. That's the good news. Or at least one of them went down. Uh, the cavalry land did happen. My things might not all be lost yet, actually. In fact, things might be okay. In fact, things might be very okay. I think the most important thing is to make sure this paratrooper gets to Mosul. There can be no victory unless we claim Mosul. Okay, we've gotten around the side. Keep sure this guy doesn't get there. There it is. We got to Mosul. <laughs> and that, America, is how it's done. So I think we can safely say we now have a justification to call ourselves an empire. So now let's make sure we form the Fallball Nation so we can wrap it up. We need to take down France. My plan for doing so is pretty much the same as last time. We're going to have to wait for Germany to defeat Poland. Same game. And there goes World War II. So now I'm afraid it becomes a race. We need to build an army, and we need to build one hell of an army as quickly as we can. So we should get this manpower up. All right, I think we're getting there. <laughs> it's happening, slowly but surely. I'm trying to find where the Italians have their airport. And by the life of me, I just can't find it. Oh, there it is. So now it all comes down to the Northern French line. How long do we think that's actually gonna hold? I'm gonna guess not too long. We're starting to set up some smaller armies in the lesser known places, such as in Syria, where after our good gains in the Middle East, we shouldn't lose them, should we? Oh God, there goes Paris. There goes France. And there goes Vichy. This is what I have been waiting for. You see, Vichy, for some reason, gets a lot of territory, like a lot, a lot of territory. and. They immediately get guaranteed by Germany, but we can just join the access to circumvent that. And this is a free justification, um, which means Indochina is free territory. In 125 days, we have ourselves a war. I just hope we can get these units out in time. Of course, now being in the Axis means we can actually do naval invasions from Italy. Of course, I'm not going to invite them in. That would be barbaric. I'm, I'm just going to, you know, ask for their kind help and... Hopefully that should be enough. There exists an unfortunate reality that I will have to deal with for this to be a victory. And I'm pretty sure that, yeah, uh, Algeria is a French core territory, which means even if I take Vichy France, I'm gonna have to take this part too to get the capitulation. So, uh, damn. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I'm not seeing many French people in the Indo-Chinese region. Um, I was kind of hoping they'd all be here so that Vichy France itself would be open, but all I'm seeing is uh, lots of people in Vichy France. Huh. Oh, good lord, there it is. Right. <laughs> Siam will either become a great empire or it will not. All right, well, we're all empty on this front, so I'm going to leave them to it. Over here, we're making some good pushes. Unfortunately, we've got some pretty contested territory out here. <laughs> on the flip side, we have made landing. Um, a pretty good landing at that too. We need to get these units over here right now. This is good. This is very good. I really didn't think we'd be getting <laughs> Africa first, but there it is. Oh my god. Uh, meanwhile, in Vichy France. Oh god, we took Vichy itself. Oh god, they keep dropping and I'm just not prepared. I didn't actually think we'd be, you know, pushing anything or winning anything. There's Montpellier. I just need a port. A port is pretty important. Wait, Toulon? That's a, uh, that's a port. I swear to goodness, I think we could do this. This is doable. We got a port. We've got some good landings. We need the navy to make sure all the convoys get there. These convoys are still stuck, uh, but the good guys have arrived. They were so obsessed with taking down these, they've accidentally let 10 uh, decent troops sneak in. Oh, now that was a mistake. What a mistake to make her. How are we doing on the old? Yep, 50%. Getting there, getting there, getting there. We have to take down Algeria though. This is very much so non-negotiable. Okay, the rest of my decent divisions are on the way. It's what we like to see. Oh my goodness, we are pushing now. We are pushing now. Please take Leon. <laughs> we just took Algeria because they're not defending it for some reason. Good one, France. Syria? Oh yeah, Syria's been a steamroll. Oh, we just need this then. We need that and it's over. 
and somehow we forgot about Nice, which is currently their capital, so another mistake on my part. Congratulations to the Siamese front for successfully defending the motherland. You have done us all proud. Well, we took back Vinci. <laughs> and that is that. A war all over the world. They sent a couple units here in the end. Syria was empty. Again, a couple units in North Africa. And then just a few units in the core of France. Anyway, I think that's a take all states for me. Job done. And where is my empire anyway? Ah, yes. Stenfun, the Ratana Kusin heritage. Boom. Okay, so now that is an empire I am pretty happy with. Um, pretty big, I could say. Pretty big all in all. Um, we, we got our, what we needed in Indochina. We have a good colony going on in the Middle East, which is definitely going to support us during the uh, Cold War. We own Northwest Africa so that people will hate us and call us colonizers. And we have a little bit in Europe in case we ever want to join the European Union. So all in all, pretty good. And with that, I'll say thank you very much for watching. Um, if you liked, feel free to like, feel free to subscribe. I can't believe I'm still <laughs> on these formations. <laughs> ah, never mind. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.